you're applauding because it's better than the guy who brought the correct sign out, right? <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, good, welcome, and uh, what a lively audience. I, I wish I could stay longer, but my role is very brief. My name is Bill Miller, and um, I direct the Fall for the Book program, uh, festival, and also the graduate writing programs here at George Mason. Thank you. I, I was going to say that you've arrived at Fall for the Book, whether you intended to or not. Um, if your arrival here is kind of accidental because you're more interested in Neil Gaiman than you are in Fall for the Book. Um, this is, uh, we started the festival Wednesday, uh, so I'm, I'm a little book fallen myself. Um, but we are having a great time. We don't end until Sunday. There are programs out in the lobby. Um, we would love it if you would pick one up if you're interested in other events. Uh, Michael Chabon, for example, in this very uh, room on Sunday. Um, following me to the podium uh, will be the mayor of Fairfax City, Mayor Silverthorne, who will introduce tonight's guest. We're going to keep the sort of things to a minimum and shift them to the end, that sort of formality stuff. So he's going to read, take questions from cards that some of you have filled out before you came in um, and answer those, then read again. Um, and uh, then we'll do the presentation and uh, then he'll be, uh, then we'll be done. Uh, but the bookstore will be open um, back out in the lobby if you haven't had a chance to buy one of the pre-signed books. So here's the mayor. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and distinguished guests. It's been 15 years since the possibilities of a book festival at George Mason University was first discussed. The city was one of the initial founders of the festival and is proud to have been a supporter of the festival ever since. In the past seven years, events have been staged in and around the city of Fairfax, our local businesses, Old Town Hall, the Museum and Visitor Center, our historic Blenheim Estate, and the city of Fairfax Regional Library. And for the past two years, our brand new Sherwood Community Center. We are proud to strengthen the ties between the city of Fairfax and George Mason's Fall for the Book Festival. It is now my distinct honor to introduce to you our special guest this evening. Neil Gaiman was born in Hampshire, United Kingdom, and now lives in the United States near Minneapolis. A self-described feral child who was born and, and who was raised in public libraries. Gaiman credits librarians with fostering his lifelong uh, love of reading. Gaiman began his writing career in England as a journalist. His first book was Duran Duran Biography that took him three months to write, and his second was a biography of Douglas Adams' Don't Panic, <laughs> the official hitchhiker's guide to the galaxy complexion. Companion, excuse me. Sorry about that. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> His groundbreaking series, Sandman, <laughs> collected a large number of U.S. awards in its 75-issue run. And I was at City Hall today, and a young woman said to me, I have every single one of those, <laughs> including nine Will Eisner Comic Industry Awards and three Harvey Awards. In 1991, Sandman became the first comic ever to receive a literary award, the 1991 World Fantasy Award for Best Short Story. He's also won the coveted Newbery Award. Mr. Gaiman is credited with, credited with being one of the creators of modern comics, as well as an author whose work crosses genres and reaches audiences of all ages. He is, a li he is listed in the Dictionary of Literary Biography as one of the top 10 living postmodern writers and is a prolific creator of works of prose, poetry, poetry, film, journalism, comics, song lyrics, and drama. So ladies and gentlemen, please join me in giving a warm Fairfax and George Mason welcome to, Dr. to Mr. Neil Gaiman. Thank you. Whoa. There are an awful lot of you. 
Hello. Um, right, so the plan for this evening, there is one. Um, although I only decided what it was about four minutes ago. So there is a plan. Um, the plan is as follows. I couldn't decide whether to read you something from my new novel, which is called The Ocean at the End of the Lane, which I sent off to the publisher for good, pressed the send button, and went, it's, it's no longer my book, at about 3.30 this morning. <laughs> um, so, It is about as fresh as anything can possibly be. And I thought, I, I, on the one hand, I'd like to read them that, but then I would, but it's a, it's a short, it's, it's, it's a novel. It keeps going. <laughs> They'll all walk out of here going, what happened next? I thought, that's not fair. Even if every single one of them goes and buys the book, it's still not out sometime next year. Um, <laughs> it's, it's still not really fair. So I thought maybe I could do a very short, short story as well. And then I thought, well, I've also got these, these questions, because I was given questions on, a, uh, on, on cards. And I have carefully separated the questions into ones I will probably answer, ones I probably won't answer because they're silly, <laughs> and Doctor Who. <laughs> so. And I may wind up just sort of taking one from one and one from the other. So my plan um, is basically I'm going to read you a little chunk of novel. I'm going to answer a bunch of questions. I'm going to read you a very short story. And they're all, they're all new things, so you shouldn't at any point wind up sitting there going, yeah, I know how this goes. And, uh, right, that's the plan. And the only thing that could conspire to defeat the plan is reading from an iPad, <laughs> which uh, occasionally is really exciting, because suddenly you go, I have no idea how I got here, or <laughs> how to get back to the thing that I actually want to get back to. So the book, is called The Ocean at the End of the Lane. And it begins with a quote from Maurice Sendak in conversation with Art Spiegelman in The New Yorker on September the 27th, 1993, where Maurice Sendak says, I remember my own childhood vividly. I knew terrible things, but I knew I mustn't let adults know I knew. It would scare them. <laughs> it was only a duck pond out the back of the farm. It wasn't very big. Letty Hempstock said it was the ocean, but I knew that was silly. She said they'd come here across the ocean from the old country. Her mother said that Letty didn't remember properly, and it was a long time ago, and anyway, the old country had sunk. Old Mrs. Hempstock, Letty's grandmother, said they were both wrong, and that the place that had sunk wasn't the really old country. She said she could remember the really old country. She said the really old country had blown up. And then I'm going to skip the prologue <laughs> and get you straight into the story. And our hero, our narrator is about seven years old, and uh, he is, as things begin, he is slightly grumpy because he's just had to give up his bedroom, and uh, the family is running short of money, and uh, different people are staying in his bedroom. My former bedroom at the top of the stairs was let out, and a variety of people passed through it I viewed them all with suspicion. They were sleeping.